Good everyone, I hope you guys have an amazing day. So in the last episode, I talked about briefly about the data model, right? So I'm going to uh, talk uh, a bit more about data models as well uh, in this episode. Uh, so in the last episode, you know, if you remember, I spoke about how person account is important. And I briefly touched about the standard object and as well the health cloud, right? So that's been great. So now I just wanted to uh, talk about a different data model uh, from a health cloud perspective. So, you know, in health cloud uh, insurance, right, yeah, the place an important role. This, uh, so do, you know, a uh, healthcare plan, right? So in the US, obviously, you know, I understand that most of the employers provide healthcare plan. In New Zealand, it's not really the case, though some companies do provide. Uh, but you know, but because most of our healthcare is free. Um, so l let me give you a scenario, right? Let's say, you know, um, so you are Mr. Charles Green and who is, um, uh, who works for a company, right? Say XYZ company and that XYZ company uh, has an insurance policy, uh, which uh, they buy from a insurance provider. So that can give, or benefit to uh, the employees, right? So now, if you look from a data model perspective, right, uh, that's pretty important, right? How each object ties to each other, because the reason why it's important to know when you're building an automation, right? When you're going to do, uh, say, any any kind of logic based on these things, right? You need to understand the underlying uh, object, how they're linked to each other, right? So, so let's start. Uh, with the the plan stuff, right? So the insurance plan. So here, as you can see, right? So business account, that's your get clouding consultancy. It's a company, right? So it's an account. Um, so they are uh, associated with the business account. That's a US employer purchase group was actually uh, responsible for buying uh, uh, a policy. So I uh, think about this way, right? So you have a big company, right? And that company has offices across the world, uh, across the planet. So for instance, XYZ. Um, so that's the name of an account. So XYZ company. The company has, you know, um, say, you know, a group in New Zealand, which is responsible for insurance. And this, similarly, they have, we have, say, office in Singapore. They're responsible. They have a group which is responsible for insurance, right? So that's, something you can think about as a business account. So that they are responsible for buying the health plan and which is a health cloud object. So now if I look at the object manager, right? So if I look at uh, plan, so this is the standard health cloud object that purchase a plan and that purchase a plan uh, has a plan benefit, right? And this purchase a plan is linked to a business account, which is obviously the insurance company, right? And then this, and then they have the plan benefit. Let's look at the purchase a plan uh, fields to see what we can find. Uh, you can also go to the schema builder to do that as well, uh, which are convenient, right? Um, so it is looking up to an account, right? So this is a payer account. So as you can see, that is looking up to a payer account. And this is a lookup, right? It's not a master detail. And then it also, so that's pretty much uh, from a uh, lookup perspective, right? So this is uh, linked to the, uh, so, uh, so this has a lookup to a business account, right? Now let's look at the plan benefit. So it will have a lookup to purchase plan, okay? So if I go here and go to the plan benefit, these are the standard ones, right? Uh, benefit, right? And field relationship. Um, so if it doesn't, then I don't know, but we'll see. Right, see the purchase plan, right? So it's a master detail relationship. So so you need to understand this when you are actually working with the health cloud. 
because these are standard objects, or standard health cloud. I mean, um, and if you don't understand this, right, you won't be able to build a solution. So um, that's one of the reasons why health cloud is important. So I'm taking it slower right, just to explain to you guys what happens when company and, and giving a real life scenario, right? You might have a health insurance, right? You work for a company, you've got a health insurance and then how the health insurance will tie up till the benefit you claim, right? So this is how it works. Okay, now, what if you wanted to claim a benefit? Let's say you wanted to go to a therapy session based on your health insurance, right? How do you, how, how does that going to work, right? Say you took a policy, right? And your policy, say, allows you to have a phys physiotherapy session, say, you know, 10 a year or whatever, right? So you went to physio for your back, right? And obviously that physio, um, you know, you say to the physio, hey, I have an insurance, and that the physio has the clinic or whatever, right? The person has to claim an insurance uh, on behalf of you so that they can get the money, right? <clears throat> uh, so how's that going to work out, right? So that's exactly how it's going to work. Um, so from a from a person account perspective, right? Let's say you as a member um, associated with this company uh, to, to this group, and then this group is the one who's buying this thingy. Right, the purchase plan, which has a member plan and all the benefits, right? So this is one way to look at the data model, which is a pretty holistic view, I would say, and very simple view at the same time. Now, like I said, right, if you wanted to go and claim an insurance or, or sorry, or leverage a facility based on insurance, you can do that. So like you say, right here, the Charles, in this case, you know, uh, uh, this uh, provider claim pro will actually create this uh, claim the insurer uh, so we'll, we'll file a claim and which contains a claim header and the claim line claim line means right providing this service to a customer right and which is obviously uh, associated with this payer right <clears throat> and this uh, and it, as you can see that this person is linked to this member plan and yeah so you know this may seem a bit off or odd to you at this stage. You must be wondering, mm, you know, we haven't done much in a health cloud, right? And this guy's starting to talk about uh, the data model. The reason why I wanted to talk about just to, you know, give you an idea, right, how this stuff works, okay? And it's not a – the thing is that I understand that I'm teaching you guys, you know, this technology, this cloud, but you need to know when you're building a solution – you know, how these models are tied up together, right? How these objects are linked to each other. That will make you a better, uh, you know, consultant or a better uh, admin, right? Or whatever, or an architect, if you understand the data model very well. So that's one of the reasons why I'm covering it. And everything is in trail here, right? So that's the reason why I didn't put into slides. What's the point? I don't, I'm just, I might as well explain from this uh, trailer, right? Explain very well. So... So yeah, that's just in a tiny shell. I wanted to nutshell. I wanted to talk about about the claims and and the payers and how they're linked to, uh, together, right? So uh, in the next episode, we're gonna do. Let's see. So we can look at the the care program data model. So um, I can. I'm gonna talk about this a bit in the next episode, care program, and also in the next episode. I will also talk about some of the social determinants of the health data model as well, right? So it'll be exciting, right? So I'm taking it slow, right? Because, you know, you guys need to learn stuff, right? There's no point in, you know, learning stuff in a hurry and then going and take a certification. This is something really, you know, find it very intriguing in Salesforce space. People wanted to take certification out of certification as a number game, right? But the way I measure people, can you do the stuff, right? For me, your certs or talking makes no difference. If you can't deliver, if you can't build a solution, it's a big letdown for me. So, you know, I, I have very high expectation. People who work with me, they know I have very, very high expectation, right? And if that doesn't, if those, you know, if the person, I mean, I understand, right? If you are someone new to Salesforce, it's fine. I'm very flexible. But if you're someone very experienced coming to work with me in the project, and if you don't deliver it, you know, I prefer to give three chance and four chance the person is out from the project. There's no, 
um, you know, beating around the bush with that. It's a pretty straightforward approach. Uh, yeah, it's, that's the way it works, right? Because we're not working for a charity. We, customer is paying our bills. So obviously we are responsible for providing a better quality solution, right? So I'm just making sure right, people who come into my project do that. If not, most likely, <laughs> you know, you know, we have a high um, turnover rate uh, in our project. Turnover rate in the sense, right, people who claim they know stuff, but they can't deliver. But the people who know stuff and they deliver, they, they stay for a longer time, right? And so, yeah, because we don't let them go, right? But if they claim they know a lot of things, but they can't deliver, unfortunately, you know, uh, like I always say, there's, there's nothing personal, right? It's just pure business. So you can't deliver, you know, I'll find someone else who can do it, right? That's the way it goes. So, yeah, that's all I wanted to talk about in this episode. Hope you guys have an amazing, um, what day is today? I forgot. I'm, I'm even, okay, amazing uh, Wednesday. Adios.